I, I love him like he's my own son. Like, sure. and um, uh, like I go and I look on the couch and he's not laying on the couch anymore. And I'm like, like, dang, like, where are you? And uh, I look into the kitchen and all I see is his feet. And he's making a noise like, uh, and um, I thought he like fell on his back and just slapped his back and the air had came out of him and he was just like, uh, but I went to go lift him and he was still making that sound like, uh, and um, I was trying to stand him up and uh, his legs were going like, like that and uh, I was tapping him on his face and trying to wake him up and uh, he went limp and uh, he almost like fell. So I caught him and when I felt the back of his head, it was like a pillow. And like I've caught knots on the head and stuff and they were hard. Like they weren't like pillow soft like that. And so I, I got scared and um, I pick him up and I'm like, wake up. and. I run upstairs to my relative's house and I'm like, we have to take him to the hospital now. And we're driving to the hospital and um, I'm looking at my son and he's like, he looks like he's dying. And uh, my cousins, I'm like screaming at him like, wake up, wake up, like stay awake, stay awake. Like, please don't go to sleep. And um, my cousin's trying to tell me to calm down. And I'm like, dude, stop telling me that. Like, bro, look at my son, bro, like, and we get to the hospital and like the, like, um, he's still all like, he's breathing, but he's like not moving and stuff. And we get to the hospital and the doors aren't opening. So I um, like try to hold him and pry open the doors and I'm banging on the door like, let me in, let me in. And I can see this other family like standing in this room. <clears throat> so I go run over there and they're like, go ahead of us, go ahead of us, cause they see my son. And I'm banging on the door like, let me in. And my, cousin, my relative had to pick up the phone and be like, uh, we have a child that's hurt, bro. Like, come open the doors. And so we go in there and I lay him on the table and I'm holding his hand, but I'm standing next to him. And they're trying to ask me his birthday and like if anything's wrong with him. And uh, I'm getting the questions wrong and like all kinds of stuff. And I ask him, uh, like they tell me, stand back, dad. And I like, I was trying to hold his hand from over here. <laughs> because of this incident, part. they took away your four month old son, right? Yes. And, I mean, how was that for you? That it really sucks, like real huh. bad. Because we just had him. Right, he's four months old. And they took him away from yeah, you. Yeah, and that, now the, the lady who's taking care of him is trying to say like, she's getting emotionally attached and she's gonna try to just keep him. You did it, and I don't. And this is why we're here, but you got to understand, I love my babies. And they're not only looking at you, they're looking at me where they're like, the only reason you're in the hospital is because you're being supervised. I just don't understand how he's so hurt. I don't understand all the... <laughs> it sucks to hear my kids jump, might not make it even if he's breathing on his own because his brain or he's going to come out a little disabled. <laughs> But I'm gonna have to take care of him till he's 15. We don't know what I'm gonna do. We don't know how he's gonna come out yet. I can't even see our baby baby. They don't even want me around baby because they think I'm a part of all this. My four month old is somewhere I don't know with people I really don't know. I've never even met these people, seen these people, and they have my kids. Where, when, our two-year-old gets out, we're, I'm not going to have him. I'm not going to be able to take him to his therapist. I'm not going to be able to comfort him with my mommy love because they don't trust me. I know they accuse us of burning with cigarettes and the doctors ruled it out. I understand that they ruled out all the things that the investigators said, but I don't understand why they're still saying, you hurt the baby. I don't understand that. I don't understand that either. <sighs> like, I don't understand that. Like, all I, all I can say is I don't, I, all I heard was the fall. That's all I heard. Let me ask you, do you, is there some doubt in your mind that maybe he did something? Honestly, Steve, I'm so confused. 
that, uh, there's not doubt, there's not, oh yes, there's no, um, my whole mind, heart, and body is literally jumbled, confused. I, uh, you know, just even listening to stories as an outsider, I feel, you know, terrible for you as a mother because here your son um, almost dies from a fall. <laughs> well, well, we don't know if it was a fall or maybe he did something, maybe he hit the child, but the child suffers an injury where your son almost loses his life. Uh, I understand he's in stable condition now. But then to compound it, they take your baby that's four months away because they must have a suspicious eye towards you also, right? Yeah, and I hate that. I hate it. They're blaming Chris because he's my baby's there. stepdad. Right. And, and I'm like... He but I mean, one morning you wake up and you have two children <laughs> and now you don't have either any. one of them. Yeah. I don't have any. I don't... Um, <coughs> Did I'll, you do anything to the child? No. Okay. I didn't do nothing to my baby. You ever burn the child with a cigarette? Never. What, I don't even did, smoke cigarettes. Okay. You ever burn it with anything else? No. Okay. That would be like... When I hear that kind of thing That's on the sick. show, right, to torture a child with burning, um, did you ever witness him do anything physically wrong to the child? No. You ever see him act violent? No. no. And that's why I'm so freaking confused. Uh, Aaron, you took a lie detector test. And we asked you, did you cause that head injury to your two year old son? You answered no. Did you ever burn your two-year-old son? You answered no. Did you ever hit your two-year-old son causing any marks, bruises, or injuries? No. You answered no. Do you know if anyone else caused any of your two-year-old son's injuries? You answered no. The results for your lie detector test, all, they came back all the same, and they came back that you told the truth. Christopher took a lie detector test. And we asked him, did you cause the, that head injury to Aaron's son? He answered no. Did you ever burn Aaron's son? He answered no. Did you ever hit Aaron's son causing any marks, bruises, or injuries? He answered no. Do you know if anyone else caused any of Aaron's son's injuries? He answered no. His results came back all the same, and it came back that Christopher told the truth. I do want to bring out Dan at this time to explain your results. Let's bring out Dan. <laughs> um, crazy story, but I said one that could happen to just about anybody, right? Because yep. kids, you know, we're not talking about, you know, a six-month-old child where you're like, oh, they crawled up. No, six-month child, because we get that story a lot. Two-year-olds are this very mobile. Two-year-old, very mobile. Uh, what do you want to say about their test? Sure, so Steve, when I was interviewing Chris in the polygraph room, as I do with everybody, I conduct a forensic assessment interview. I look at what he says, how he says it, what he tells me, what he doesn't tell me. So I deemed him credible just from the interview alone. I want to bring out something that he said on stage. Um, he said on stage, the police think that I beat the child, the police think that I maybe slammed the child's head on the floor, but I didn't do any of those. So a guilty person usually has a hard time saying what they're accused of, as well as admitting that they did not do it. They have a hard time denying that they did not cause the act. That once again strengthens my belief that he's innocent. Plus, he passed the polygraph test beautifully. Thank you very much. Um, you know, first and foremost, we, like I said, everybody in this room watching the show is going to root for your son's full recovery. We all want that. Thank you. Um, and I hope this helps you uh, going forward because, you know, accidents do happen with children, but 
Uh, the system does try to protect the children. It's, it, it's, it feels very unfair, I'm sure, to you guys right now. Yeah. But I hope this helps in some way. Yeah. Um, and we, we hope that you get your kids back yes. soon and healthy. And we wish you all luck in the world. Thank, Thank you so much. much.